Hey guys, it's Karen from A Yarn Tale. I'm coming to you from Chicago where I live with my husband, our three kids, and our dog, Max. This is a knitting podcast where I share a little bit about what I've been working on, what I want to work on, um, what I haven't worked on. And you can find me on all the places. I'm on Instagram as Not Fancy Knitter. That's K N O T Fancy Knitter. And also on Ravelry as Not Fancy Knitter, although um, I'm a little bit more active on Instagram. There is a Ravelry group for this podcast if you want to pop on over and say hello. Um, I'd love to hear what you're working on and um, where you're from. If you are a new viewer, welcome. I'm so glad you found your way here. And to my longtime subscribers, welcome as well. Uh, I always love to uh, recognize some familiar faces in the comments and um, see how you guys are doing. So let's just hop right into it. This is not a huge episode, um, only because I'm wrapping up the Stephen West MCAL. It's uh, the last week, so hopefully this will be the last time you'll have to hear about it. Uh, and if you're not interested in uh, mystery knit along spoilers, I'll save it till the very end. I'll let you know before I show anything. So you don't have to worry about that. But let's just hop right in. So I have one finished object, and it's actually an old finished object. I finished it a long time ago and realized I never showed it on the podcast. So this is a scarf. It is called... The Noro Striped Scarf, very original. Um, it's a free pattern and it's kind of more of a recipe than a pattern. Uh, it is written up by Jared Flood, but it's really bare bones and I actually had to go into the comments or into the project pages on Ravelry to sort of understand what he was talking about because he was kind of like, first you do this, then you do that, then it's like, you know, just slip a few things and blah, blah, blah and, and um, repeat. And I was like, what? <laughs> but I like the way it looked. I knit this out of Noro Silk Garden. It's two skeins of um, two different colorways, so four skeins total. And it is um, a two row stripe all the way down. And I'm gonna actually look at the colorways so that if you're interested, Noro Silk Garden is an Aran weight and it is um, colorway 267. That's kind of the gray and brown portion of it. And then colorway 511, which is the really colorful one. It's like blue, kind of a highlighter yellow. It goes into these, like, um, there's also some grays. A lot of people kind of, um, in the project pages, they talked about how they cut the yarn when it got to these muddy sections, because um, the more colorful skein does have some brownish parts of it which when, depending on how it matches up with the other colorway, um, it gets really muddy. But I left it in because um, I am not usually that colorful. And I kind of liked that there were some areas of the scarf that were more neutral. Um, I had never used Nora before. It is completely addicting. There's a lot of thick and thin. So some parts of it, let me see if I can find it, have these like big blobs. Like what's that orange there? I don't know. It's like these big poofy blobs in the yarn. And here's like a little lighter one. So there's a lot of texture to it, um, but it's just a really simple pattern. I don't actually remember exactly what I did. Um, I'd have to look at the recipe again, but it's basically just knitting and, and slipping stitches. Um, it was super easy to remember and it was completely addictive. I knit it flat, which was really weird. I haven't knit anything flat in a long time. So I used these giant straight needles and just kept on going until my skeins were, were done. <laughs> So it's pretty long. Um, I didn't measure it, but it's pretty long. But I like that for a scarf. It went really fast. I am not a scarf knitter. I've only attempted scarves a couple times and I mostly have hated it because it's too repetitive and it's just really boring. But with the two colorways and sort of the interest of the yarn itself, this project flew. I wanna say I knitted it in a couple of weeks, not working on it exclusively. So. I would recommend it for a gift knit. Um, I think it looks really cool. I would like to get this as a gift. Um, it is not super soft. I don't know how familiar are, you are with Noro. I didn't block it because I didn't want it to stretch in a weird way. Um, maybe that would soften it up. I don't know. I really like it. As outerwear, I don't need that to be super soft. So that is my Noro Silk Garden. Um, do I have anything else to say about that? I don't think so. Two skeins of each, knit till you're done. Um, highly recommend. So that is it for finished objects. 
And actually, you guys, I only have two works in progress because of the mystery knit along. So I'm gonna talk about my one um, and then let you know when we get into Stephen Westland. So I um, am usually not a big shawl knitter. And especially since I've been working on the shawlography, um, you wouldn't think that I would wanna cast on yet another shawl. <laughs> and yet here we are. Um, okay, so I've been trying to think of what I can make for my mother-in-law because she is always interested in what I'm knitting. Um, she'll stop over and um, see the kids, but also ask me about what I'm working on. And she always seems kind of into it. So I figured it would be nice to give her something. Um, also, we've been having a lot of uh, sort of disruption in our house with our home renovation. So um, we actually stayed with my in-laws uh, for a night while they were doing spray foam insulation. So we didn't all like inhale toxic chemicals. <laughs> and I wanted to say thank you, um, you know, for being so helpful and taking in all five of us and our dog um, on really short notice. So I was trying to think of what I could make for her that she would actually enjoy. Um, and I thought maybe like a scarf or a shawl. I don't feel comfortable knitting a sweater for someone else just yet. I haven't tried it yet. Um, and I just, I'm not confident that I could get like a fit or a style that she would really wear. She doesn't wear a lot of sweaters, maybe cardigans. I don't know, I'm gonna have to think about that one, but I was like, probably a shawl. Started looking around for a shawl pattern that was pretty classic and um, maybe textured. She's super neutral as far as colors, um, as far as what she wears. So that's kind of right in my regular wheelhouse. I feel like I've been knitting really bright stuff. So it kind of was appealing to me to find something that was a little bit more toned down. What I settled on was the Void Shawl by Melanie Berg. Um, it's just a textured, textured shawl pattern um, with these faux cables, like um, twisted stitches. And it makes this really geometric pattern. And um, it is the sample is knit in fancy yarn. It is wool folk far, which I had not worked with any wool folk yarns before. I actually had never seen them in person. But I heard they were amazing. And so I figured like, I'm going to try it. I knit mine out of wool folk far in the colorway 31. It's kind of a really light seafoam greenish blue color, pretty gray, um, really lovely. It is super soft and squishy. It's 100% merino. It's worsted weight and you get 140, 142 yards to 50 grams. So I bought, I wanna say six skeins of this, um, which was a super treat. <laughs> so um, I've started the shawl, even though I'm supposed to be working on the mystery knit along, which is also a shawl. I feel like this is just totally different. So this is how it's knitting up. Um, it is really lovely to knit with. It's super soft and squishy. I love the texture of the shawl. There's like these diamond, diamond patterns that you just make with twisted stitches and knits and pearls. So really pretty. It's going to be kind of an elongated crescent shaped shawl, I think. A lot of people have used it as a scarf. Um, so I'm, I like that about it. I think for non-knitters to give someone kind of a full half moon shawl would be kind of a struggle as far as how to wear it unless they're already a shawl wearer, which my mother-in-law is not. So um, I am excited. I have knit through almost one entire ball. So this is this is what I have left of one ball and I've got five more. So I think it's gonna be a good size. I mean, if you think five times this, um, that's a lot. Some people have said it's too long and skinny, but I actually think that's gonna be fine. And, and actually I was knitting on it when we stayed at their house and um, my mother-in-law seemed kind of into it, <laughs> which is good because it's for her and I didn't say so. Um, it is a lot thicker than I expected. It's, it's really light because um, it's 100% merino, but um, I knit it at kind of a tighter gauge. I didn't gauge swatch. I didn't gauge swatch because I don't usually for shawls um, and the fabric is kind of dense. I'm hoping that when I block it, which I'll block it before I get to her, I'm hoping that when I block it, it'll sort of become a little bit more drapey because this is pretty dense. Um, but even if it doesn't, I still think it's gonna be lovely. It's super soft and squishy. So as far as gift knits go, um, this looks like a winner. And it is fun to work on because my other problem is, I'll say that I'll knit things for people and then start it and be like, oh, I 
actually super hate this project. Uh, so I think this one I can actually finish. And I did this, I wanna say I knit through one ball in a couple of days. So um, if I actually end up using all six skeins, then that would put it at like a two week project if I worked on only that, which I'm sure I won't. But I should be able to finish that by Christmas, hopefully. Or if I'm super motivated, her birthday's the end of November, maybe I can do it then. I don't know. I don't know. We're gonna see. So that is The Void Shawl by Melanie Berg. All right, and the only other work in progress that I have is the Stephen West Mystery Knit Along. So if you're working on this and you're not into spoilers, I am just starting clue four, the last clue. So um, if you're not up for seeing the start of clue four, then um, I will put the time that I stop talking about the mystery knit along in the down bar. So um, you'll know where to skip to if you don't wanna see spoilers. So see you later. Okay, so it is the last week of the mystery knit along. Um, there have been four clues. This is the last one. So I just started clue four. Last time on the podcast, I think I had finished clue two, I think. Um, but I'll show you where I'm at. Okay, it started. This is what I have so far. It started in the center of that little bright green semicircle. And you knit out, and I believe the last time I showed it, I was somewhere in here, I think. You do these I-cord loops, and then you do these little pink welts. So, such crazy texture, like, check that out. That was fun. And then there's this triangle section that's just slip stitches. Then a whole section of baubles, which, I was super dreading because I don't know if you watched the episode where I talked about my Magnolia Pullover by Camilla Vad. There were all these nups in there, or noops, and they were the worst ever. But these were much better. They're little, actually little I-cord. I don't know how to show that. They're little I-cord um, loops that you just pull in on themselves. So that was much better. Um, much better than the noop situation I had with my Magnolia cardigan. So it was slow, but it wasn't like I wanted to stab myself <laughs> with my knitting needles. Then you do these giant wedges of the pink and the brown. That giant wedge, and there's an identical one on the other side um, that's just a little bit tricky to show. Right, so on the other side, you got this wedge over here. And then clue three was a brioche section, two color brioche right here. So mine is navy in the foreground and that green pop in the in the back. On the reverse, on the back of the shell, it's the reverse. So you got the green in the front and the navy in the back. I've only tried brioche one other time. I did a test knit um, shawl for Crystal Hyatt of Millie's Knit Designs and it was the Eckerd Street Shawlette. And there was a brioche section in there, but it was one color brioche. And when I accepted the test, I, I actually thought one color brioche would be a lot easier because you wouldn't have to fiddle with the two yarns. But I think it's the opposite. Doing the two color brioche was way easier because you can just see what's happening. Um, you can kind of tell, you know, if you've done brioche before, you know there's these yarn overs um, and slip stitches. And in two color brioche, the yarn over and the slip stitches are two different colors. It's much easier to keep track of than single color brioche where everything kind of jumbles together and I had a really hard time messing up the pattern and kind of trying to fix it. So um, this two color brioche, either I'm getting better, which maybe, maybe I'm getting better, but I actually think it's just easier to keep track of. And if I did screw it up, it was way easier to see what was happening and um, try to fix it because you could tell like, oh, I gotta get a blue one. I gotta get my blue one under there. You could kind of, um, troubleshoot what was happening. So I had my two color brioche, which was actually fun. Um, he also had a non brioche option that was kind of a mesh pattern, which I thought looked really cool. Um, and I would love to try that in another shawl or something, but I really wanted to go with the brioche for this because it seemed like that was what he actually intended and was only doing the non brioche option for people who were like, heck no, I never do brioche. It was like hard stop. So I don't feel that way about it. I was going to give it a try. 
And then there was this crisscross section in the white. This is super hard to show. They make these crisscross X's. Um, really cool texture. I love the look of these crisscross stitches. They're such a cool, you make these elongated wraps and then um, knit them, and then, then pull the wraps off your needle and knit those super long loops, like cross them over each other and knit them. I mean, how you even come up with this stuff, I have no idea. I think it looks amazing, but thank God it does look amazing because it was seriously the worst to knit. Um, you do this little setup, a couple of setup rows, and then the actual crisscrossing is only a single row. And I just wanted, I mean, it was just the worst. I got like three or four crisscrosses into it and was like, no, no, I cannot do it. But I didn't know what to, I was like, should I just omit it? That seems like cheating. So it just powered through, but truly each one was awful. <laughs> I could not. It never got faster. It never got better. I never got uh, good at it. It was just like, oh, I'm never doing this again. But I am glad. I really like how it looks. So um, I guess it was worth it. I guess. I mean, I did it. Let's put it that way. I did it. And then that's it for glue three. And the only thing that's left is this stripey border um, all along the crisscross stitches. So I only have done the first two stripes. Um, but you just stripe through all of your colors. Like I was going to do green, pink, brown, what else? White, navy, green, pink, brown, white, navy. This is the worst. <laughs> I can't hold those things up. Okay, so you just do your stripe border all the way down and then bind off. And actually, maybe I'm wrong about this. Maybe I am wrong about this, but I think it makes your bind off smaller because wouldn't, if you do your stripes, wouldn't you end up with only this much to bind off at the last stripe? Because I am making an I cord as I go along the edge. So instead of having to do like a three hour I cord bind off all the way around the edge of the shawl, I think it's gonna be kind of a small edge. But I'm not the best at, um, reading patterns and visualizing how it's going to work out. So maybe I'm wrong about that. And I'm going to have like 600 stitches to bind up. <laughs> we will find out. We will see. We shall see. Um, but that is my shellography. I am super glad that I participated. I will say this shawl, um, my color palette, I don't know what I was thinking when I chose it. I was like, um, maybe had had too much coffee that day because it is so bright is so bright that I don't know where I'm possibly going to wear it. I'm going to have to wear like all black <laughs> just to balance it out because this is just crazy pants. It is. I, I do think the colors work well together. I love the way that it looks. I love the texture. Um, I have really enjoyed knitting it. I did not expect to enjoy knitting it. I thought it would be like a huge like pressure cooker where I'm frantically trying to keep up and I have not felt that and I've mostly been able to keep up. Um, I've really just enjoyed the mystery aspect of it and, and seeing all the other different color palettes that people chose. It's, it's really fun. So if you have not done the mystery knit along, I would highly recommend it. Also every week, Steven puts out videos and those videos are just like a godsend because, um, I would have screwed up several things <laughs> on the shelf. If I had not watched the video first. That said, he manages to make these crisscross stitches look easy, breezy, cover girl, and that is a lie. <laughs> it is horrible, but um, I don't know. Maybe he's like some kind of genius because he manages to just fly through it and you're like, oh, that looks like fun. I could definitely do that. So I guess in that sense, it's motivating. Um, let me quick go through the yarns I'm using because I realized I didn't do that last time um, and it's gonna be over. So you should at least know what I'm working on. My color A is Traveling Yarn in their 757 sack. It's 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon in their Outspoken collection in the Arrowroot colorway. I love this. I, I um, wasn't sure after I bought it whether I really wanted a shawl that had this like such a bright, um, such a bright pop to it, but I really love it. I think it makes the shawl um, and I it's just fun to use. That said, I did spill my coffee on it, so it's a little speckled, <laughs> but you can't really see it. I mean, 
I don't even think I'm gonna end up using that part of the yarn in the shawl because I have a lot of yarn left and I'm pulling from the center. So maybe I won't get to my self-speckled yarn. <laughs> I don't know, I think it'll wash out. You can't really tell. Hopefully, that's what I tell myself. My color B is Pitchfork Fiber Stalwart Sock. It's also 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon in the colorway Night Fever. I love this tonal navy. Um, it's coming out a little bit brighter on the camera because I'm right by the window. Um, but it is like a true navy um, just with some tonal variation. Really nice to knit with. My C is just an attempt to tone it all down. <laughs> It is Kelborn Woolen's Perennial. That is know, it's kind of a weird base. It's 60% Superwash Merino, 25% Alpaca, and 15% Nylon in the colorway Natural. Um, it's super soft. I guess that's the Alpaca, but I do think it is like a calming presence in the shawl. And then D is the Movers and Makers Wicker Park Fingering in the colorway Dollhouse. And that's also 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon, um, this really bright pink. I've used this before and I do love it. I don't know, I never would consider myself a pink person, but it is fun. You, there is no denying that. And my last color is um, Northern Bee Studio Sturdy, Northern Bee Studio Sturdy Sock, 75% 75 75 Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon in the colorway Juvenile Bald Eagle, which is this tonal brown, which I really like. Um, and I just, I like the twist on that. I don't know if you can see it. You can't see it, but it's really twisty. <laughs> it's a tight twist. I wish, I should probably spin just so that I know what I'm talking about, but I, I'm so hesitant to go down yet another rabbit hole. And truly, if I think I were gonna go down a rabbit hole, it would be weaving. Cause I know one day when I'm an old lady, like next week, <laughs> I'm going to get myself a loom and um, my family will never see me again. I'll be like up in the attic with my loom doing crazy fiber things. So that is the Stephen West Mystery Knit Along. I would recommend trying it if you're at all up for a challenge. Um, and hopefully I can knock it out before the next podcast because I don't think I'm going to finish by Friday. Um, it's really hard for me to knit on the weekends, especially this weekend with Halloween. There was just a lot of other family stuff uh, that we ended up doing. And, you know, the kids wanted to carve their pumpkins and go trick-or-treating and get their, like, outdoor Halloween parties in. Um, and it just didn't leave a lot of knitting time. So I have to, I pretty much started this on Monday. Um, and I only did that tiniest bit. So unless I can knock out the whole border in like four days, um, it's gonna take me longer than one week. But I feel like it was still successful because I kept up with the mystery aspect of it. Like there's no more clues, so I can just finish the border whenever I get around to it. And that is it. You guys, that's all I'm working on. Um, I have a lot of things that I wanna work on, um, but I'm not gonna get into that just yet. Uh, if you are, knitting gifts, um, please remember to enter them into the 2021 gift make along that I'm hosting with Amanda of Southernness in the Mitt. Um, there is an FO thread over in the Ravelry group for this podcast and also an FO thread over in Amanda's Ravelry group for the Southernness in the Mitt podcast. I, we have not talked, we should really hammer this out, whether you can um, enter them in both or whether we're going to draw from one or both or what the prizes are. <laughs> We don't have any prizes yet, but we're totally gonna get them. So um, please enter your finished objects into the thread so that you can be eligible to win whatever fabulous prizes we come up with. I'm definitely, that is on my list of stuff to figure out for this week. I have um, knitting podcast questions. So I'm kind of new to knitting podcasts. I am kind of new to knitting. I mean, this is my second year, but I really have only watched knitting podcasts for a year. Which is kind of insane that I'm doing one, but here we are. And I have noticed like a bunch of people did Vlogtober where they like put together little video snippets of what they're doing for fall. And um, a bunch of people have done Vlogmas, which is, I guess, sort of the same thing, but for the month of December. But I kind of don't get it. Like, is it, what do people like? Vlogmas and Vlogtober? Like, is that something I should be doing? I don't really, 
I mean, like, do you just do it for the fun stuff that you do or you just like check in during the day? I don't, I'm not, uh, let's put it this way. I'm not planning on doing Vlogmas because I don't really understand fully what it is, but I'm not opposed to it. So if that's something that is cool and fun, um, let me know. Or like the kinds of things that you like to see, is it knitting related? Is it not knitting related? Is it like, I didn't order an advent, a yarn advent because they're super pricey and I don't have a lot of things that I'm planning on doing with mini skeins. So the idea of having literally 24 mini skeins and then sometimes a full skein on top of that kind of stressed me out from a stash perspective. Um, so I don't have like a little yarny advent thing that I can open every day for my Vlogmas. <laughs> I mean, we can open my kids advent. Um, I, so um, my oldest is 10. He'll be 11 in January. And so when he was little, I was um, a really motivated first time parent. And I was like, oh, let's get one of those fancy like Pottery Barn advent calendars that has all the pockets in it, you know, and you like stuff them with little treats and toys or whatever. And I like painstakingly picked out special little treats for um, each little day of December and 25 little treats. And um, I was really into it. And then I had my second kid and I was like, Oh no, I have to get another one. That's, um, that's 50 little treats. Okay. 50 treats. I can do it. Um, I think I can do it. Some of those pockets are really small and it's hard to find something that tiny. And then we had our third kid and I was like 75 little treats. This is a nightmare. So, um, I have convinced my oldest to go with the Lego star Wars advent calendar, which is awesome because it's pre-filled and it's Legos and like he loves it. But my girls are still into, the ones that I fill and I think I set the bar slightly too high so every year I dread it <laughs> and I'm like when are they gonna age out so I don't have to find 50 little doodads to go in there um <laughs> so we can look at what I managed to find for my kids but I don't think that's super interesting for adults because like do they want to see like oh, it's jelly bellies today hooray um I mean I can like vlog when we make cookies but like we're a hot mess. Like everything is not good to look at. <laughs> and I'm a little bit hesitant to bring the crazy out into the internet. Like um, we have a saying in our house, like keep the crazy in the house, right? If you're going to melt down, if you're going to um, just have a bad day or make a mess or whatever, like do all that in your home with people that love you and care about you and um, won't judge. <laughs> and don't do that at school. Like don't bring that out to your friends or the general public, God forbid, or certainly the internet. So I'm a little bit hesitant to embark upon Vlogmas, but let me know what, what your feelings on it are. I also feel like it's kind of a lot um, to have videos all the time from me. I don't know. Um, we're kind of on a every two week, every week, every two week basis. And I feel like like that's probably enough. I mean, YouTube tells me that people can handle me for about 15 minutes. <laughs> and then they're like, you know what? I'll catch you next time. And that's cool too. So um, I guess my question is Vlogmas, yay or nay? How do you feel about it? Do you like it when other people do it? Are you not into it? Um, I, I will say I am leaning towards sort of sitting it out and watching some of my other podcasters um, that I like to watch go through Vlogmas and see if it's something that sort of resonates with me or not. But I, I would love to know how you feel about that. And that's all. You guys, I hope you have the most amazing week. It's November. It's full on fall. Um, it is cold. It feels extra cold here because we currently have no heat on our first floor because of our home renovation. They told me we're going to have a furnace um, tomorrow. <laughs> So I'm um, way upstairs where it's nice and warm, but when you go down to the kitchen, man, it is Arctic, hence the scarf. So definitely feels like fall. Um, I hope you have some fall treats. We went to the apple orchard and picked a bunch of apples. We got some pumpkins, we carved them. We're like full fall over here. So uh, I hope you have some time to enjoy the season. And if you don't, like maybe you can just cuddle up with your knitting and call it a day. There's no reason to go out there. <laughs> Have a good week. I will talk to you soon. Hopefully it won't be um, too long. I'm going to try to knit some stuff that's not Stephen West so that um, it'll be interesting for you all <laughs> and me as well. Take care. Happy knitting.
like, oh no, I'm dropping stitches. Wait, am I dropping stitches? Okay. Pay attention. Pay attention. 